Because you know why we pulled you out of the car? Because you was not listening to anything we told you. Right, but I didn't know what was going on. You listen to us and we will tell you what's going on, all right? Is he on something? No, he got a thing going on. I'm telling you what about the police. What does that mean? He have problems all the time when they come, especially when that man stood that gun like that. All right, stand up. Since we had three people and only us two officers, I was like, you know, we should put him in the car. We're going to get him secured. So after Officer King tells George Floyd they're going to put him in the car, Officer Lane comes up to help escort George Floyd across the street back to their squad car and asks him, you know, hey, man, are you on something? You're acting erratic. What indicated to you that Mr. Floyd may have been under the influence? Uh, his body language, kind of the, the restless and constant movement. Are you on something right I'm now? I'm not nothing. Because you act yeah. real erratic. Man, Let's it's go. Scared, man. From childhood, George Floyd was grappling with an influx of drugs in his community. You got violence going on, the, the drugs, the, just everything going on around here that you have to avoid, that you have to weave through to try to, you know, make a better life for yourself. So it's kind of hard starting off behind the eight ball. He did drugs. Not He wasn't a, a heavy, just drug addict. I mean, he still went to work. He still was able to provide for himself. He still was able to take care of his business. I never knew him to do fentanyl or methamphetamines, ever. The next decade of George's life was a cycling in and out of the criminal justice system. It started with a drug offense in 1996. George just got caught up, with, you know, with the wrong people at the wrong time. He was involved and arrested several times for drugs and for an armed robbery, ultimately, that landed him in a Texas prison. We all have a past. We all have things we did that we regret, that we don't, we wish we didn't do. When you think that your life is gonna go one way and, and it, it, it kinda goes another, I just see him trying to figure things out. George Floyd came to Minnesota looking for a better life. And he landed here because of a gentleman in Minneapolis who actually bought his bus ticket here and said, come to Minneapolis, come stay in this home with other men, get clean, and we're gonna fix you up and set you on a better path in life. He just wanted to get free from drugs and alcohol. And from what I understand from Floyd, if he completed the program, they would help him get employment and he'd be able to get custody of Gianna. Ready. My name is CG and I am the daughter of George Floyd. George's daughter was the apple of his eye. You can see every time he talked about it, he just beamed. His eyes got big, and he just the smile would come across his face. You know what? His baby is his world. I mean, honestly, his world. But he loved Gigi. He used to call me Buttercup. I liked it, that name, Buttercup. <laughs> he wanted to just be a better man and a better father. He loved her with all his heart. He would call me nonstop. How Gigi doing? How Gigi doing? I was like, oh. <laughs> Stop calling me, man. And he was telling me he had him a job. He was down there working in the program. He was doing good. He liked it. He went down there and graduated the program, and he got his commercial driver's license. And people who know Floyd, that's a big accomplishment. He was pretty successful with working. He had a couple of jobs. He was working at a steel mill or steel plant. He did, like, random security jobs. He was still you know, able to make ends and odds meet. You looking good, you working out, you a bouncer, you got a job, you work at the Salvation Army at the Boys Club, and you a bouncer. Gonda Latin Bistro is a restaurant and nightclub. It's like the Latino cheers. I found George Floyd through an ad in Craigslist. I was looking for uh, security staff, and uh, I interviewed him right in those boots over there. When I saw him, I said, well, this tall guy is intimidating, but at the same time, he's friendly. You felt safe, not just because he was big, but you felt safe because he brought like this sense of joy and knowing that he was doing his job 
and that he just wanted to make sure everybody was having a good time. All the people there loved him, you know what I mean? People migrated towards him, and he was a flirt. I'm not even gonna lie about that. <laughs> George's life was really coming together. Things had been as good for him as they had ever been. And then his mom died, and everything changed. When Miss Sissy died, it was like a piece of him died. George loved his mother, and his mother was bigger than life. His mother reminded him everything that was happy and loving in their home, and she wasn't there anymore. His mother's death took a toll on him. He thought he would have his mama forever. It really, really hurt him. And he, he took it real hard. He was a strong, strong person, but uh, that broke him. Just looking at him, I, I knew he was never going to be the same. And then came the pandemic, um, and he lost his job. It was just a whole lot of different emotions and feelings that he was going through. Like a week and a half before he died, he said, uh, man, I love you, Stiff. I said, I love you too, Georgie. He's like, I'm going to call you later. All right. That's the last time I talked to him. That just unlocked the door for me. I was beating it there. Stand up. Stop falling down. I'm claustrophobic, man. Stand up. I'm claustrophobic. Stay on your feet and face the car door. He's always been claustrophobic. That's why he doesn't fly. <laughs> because he can't get off. Like, he prefers to take the bus. At least you can stop, get off, smoke a cigarette, get back on, stretch your legs. He, he's always been claustrophobic. Take a seat. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Take a seat. I'm going in. I'm going no, in. you're not. I feel like by me knowing him, and when they were trying to put him in the car, he was saying, I'm not the kind of guy. I'm not the kind of guy. I'm not the kind of guy, man. Floyd really not the kind of guy. He was trying to do the right thing. Take a seat. Yo, I would die in here. Take a seat. I would die, man. You need to take a seat right Yo. now. And I just had COVID, man. I don't want to go back to that. Him actually being scared and feeling the reaper. That's what's gonna stick with me. I'll roll the windows down Please, and put your legs in, all right? Y'all keep your eyes. Stop, look at that, look at that. Look, 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 look at it, look at it. We can fix Obviously, he didn't want to get in that car. Yeah. Did you ever think about maybe a different way to handle this? Hey, maybe we should just sit him on the curb again? No. He would not go in the back seat. He resisted it to the extent that they had already called another squad for help. Mind, I don't believe me. I was Take a, a seat. I'm not the kind of guy. Charles McMillian is a bystander who's one of the first to even get involved in the arrest of George Floyd. I don't want to try to win. Quit me sitting, bro. You hear him pleading in the background. You can't win. Just give up. You're not going to win this way. He kept his sister arrest because he kept telling them that he was class open to the police car. They ain't gonna win. I'm just a woman. I got anxiety. I don't want to do nothing to I'll roll the window down. This man in his 60s lives in the neighborhood. And he was really one of the first people we saw who really tried to step in and do something. Nobody knew what's coming next. Nobody knew what was coming next. Man, I'm scared of this. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.